So how's it going guys? Welcome to part two of the Miata push button install. Just wanted to make a quick announcement before the video about the Harley giveaway. We haven't had quite the outcome I was hoping for. Obviously I'm still new on YouTube, fairly new channel, so I don't really have the following I need to get a thousand people to buy a $20 raffle ticket at this point. So I've extended it until the end of January. Again, if at the end of January, all 1,000 tickets haven't been sold. Everyone who has purchased a ticket will get their money refunded minus the PayPal fees. I think it's only 80 cents on the 20, so you're gonna get 19, 20 back just for trying. So hopefully we can hit 1,000 by the end of January. I'll announce the winners on February 2nd and uh, make the video on February 10th. I've updated the blog to say so. Click the stored link in the video description to see all the info and details and pictures of the bike. About the video, I know it's kind of hard to explain everything and through a, a camera and to be able to understand what you're looking at. It kind of would help if you are doing this to get in the car and actually be working on your car while you have the video going and kind of go along with my video as you're doing it, pausing the video after each step. As long as everything matches what I did in the video, yours should work perfectly. If you have any questions, comment in the video comments before you do the next step. I don't want to be responsible for you breaking your car. This video took easily three hours to film and probably twice as long to edit. So. I hope you guys like it. I hope it helps anybody that's looking to install. You could do probably the same thing in other cars, but I can't guarantee it because the wiring colors are gonna be different, but principles are all the same. So again, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate all the support I've gotten this year. Happy New Year and happy holidays to everybody watching. And I really appreciate all the support and the positive comments. So keep it coming guys. I'll keep making videos. I don't think I'm ever gonna quit doing this and hope you enjoy. All right, luckily I got my GoPro light in the mail the other day, so this is definitely gonna help for this install. Welcome back to Wayne's Work Vlog. We're gonna get these push to start button install done today. I'm gonna have to drill some holes down here, right here under the light. So I'll have a couple switches and then I'm gonna have my push button in the cigarette lighter. I'm also going to eliminate this key switch altogether. You have two options with the key switch. The first option is to take a flathead screwdriver, jam it in there with a hammer, put some vice grips on it and turn it like you're trying to steal the car. That is obviously going to destroy this lock cylinder. You're gonna still need the key for the doors and the trunk, but it will break the steering wheel lock, which there we go. You see, if you turn the wheel to enough degree, the wheel's gonna lock, and you don't want that happening while you're driving, so we need to completely destroy this lock cylinder. Now, the secondary way to do it, which I'm going to do, is to remove this and this, after we remove this base plate down here, we can drop the bolts holding the steering wheel column to the dash. We're gonna drop this whole thing down and we're gonna actually cut this cylinder off of the steering wheel. That way the steering wheel can turn freely no matter what, there'll be no more lock. And we're gonna completely remove this and then put a plate over it so that there's no hole or anything. So first things first, I need to remove this cigarette lighter. Pretty easy to get out. Sometimes you can just pull it straight out from the front, but we're gonna drop this plate out of the way down here and then I can reach up in the back and push it out, disconnect the wires, drill some holes, get my relays all wired up, cut the wiring off of the ignition switch itself and go from there. So that's how we're gonna do it. Because we are gonna be working with the main relay circuit of the car and you do not wanna blow a main relay because then you're gonna have to find a new one. Even though it's a relay, I think it's just a really big fuse. They can be difficult to find if you don't have access to stores that carry them. But since we're gonna be working on that circuit, we wanna disconnect the positive terminal of the main battery battery. It is a 10 millimeter. Literally just loosen it up, wiggle it, and pop it right off. Tuck it over to the side so it doesn't accidentally come in contact with the battery, and then we're safe to work. Now we're back in the car. I'm going to use a Phillips head to remove the knee panel, kick panel, whatever you call it. Just a couple of Phillips head screws. Just drops right out of the way. Next, there's a few Phillips head screws right inside of this cover that we need to remove so we can access the key lock cylinder. The last one is way up inside. It's really hard to hit. If you look up in there, you can kind of see the head and then you can line it up just right. There we go. Once you have all four screws removed, it should just come right apart in two pieces. There'll be a top and a bottom. There we go. Make sure you catch all the screws. Looks like I already lost one. Great. Now we can kind of see 
the ignition cylinder itself. Right under here, there's a strap that loops around the steering shaft. So it's easier to drop the steering shaft down and then you can cut the top strap and this whole unit will just fall away, taking the ignition lock with it. The main harness is in the back over here next to this guy. We're gonna disconnect this connector here and that will drop it free. And those are the wires we're gonna be using to wire up our starter switch. As you can see, there's two white wires that provide power to the key lock cylinder. There's also a black with red, which powers your wipers, your heater blower motor, your headlights, your cruise control, all your essentials. The black with white wire is your cigar lighter and your radio system, power antenna, anything connected to the radio. The black with the blue wire right here is the start wire. And then the blue wire powers your ignition system, your computer, all that stuff. We're gonna get these wires cut out of here. Since the battery's disconnected, we don't have to worry about a short. We can also disconnect this harness, which runs to the light on the side of the key switch, which we do not need anymore because we're going to be removing it completely. This can just get tied up out of the way. I'm gonna separate these wires one at a time. And because I'm not ever reusing this key lock cylinder, I'm gonna cut them as close to the harness as I possibly can to give myself as much wire as possible. There's the ignition coil wire. There is the start wire. There's the radio accessory wire, the two white constant power wires, and the main systems wire. Now for the stripper. I'm gonna strip off enough wire to make a good connection. Now that we have all of our wires stripped, we can start connecting our relays. Luckily, I brought the diagram with me. So the first order of business is to take one of the white wires and we're gonna connect it to the 30 of the accessory and the 30 of the run circuit. Those are the two four pin relays. And as you can see, I've removed the red wire from the center pin because we're not gonna be using it. So that makes it a little easier. These are the single pole, single throw relays. 30 is the blue wire on this harness. So what we're gonna do Let's take these two blues. We're going to shorten them because these harnesses are going to be kind of close to where we're at right now. Then we'll zip tie them to the steering shaft and out of the way. First, we shorten. Then we strip. Then I'm going to twist these together. And I'm going to pick either of the two white wires, making sure I have plenty of white wire exposed. I'm going to connect these two blues to this white. And a lot of people prefer to solder these or use butt connectors. I personally have had nothing but trouble with people that have used butt connectors or solder on projects that I've purchased the car after the project was done and had all kinds of wiring issues. And every time it ended up being one of the butt connectors or the solder joints was bad. With solder, if you're exposed to a lot of heat or the circuit itself ever overheats, it can weaken the solder and loosen your connection and you'll be chasing a ghost forever trying to find out which joint is actually bad. So I do a multi-twist then twist it around on itself and then I tape the wires to each other and I have never ever had one of these come undone or short out. If the blue is the 30s then the output is the yellow which would be circuit number 87 and then the white is our switched and the black is our ground obviously. So for the yellow on the first one, we're going to connect that to the black and the white, which goes to our radio accessory. So we're gonna cut off some wire. We're gonna strip off a bunch. Ease of twisting. Then we're gonna twist this to the black and white. Meaning that until my accessory switch is flipped, powering this relay, there will be no juice going to the radio but that also means that I can power up the radio circuit without turning the car on at any time. A lot of times, especially with how crappy electrical tape has gotten recently, or maybe I'm just buying the cheap shit, I'll also go back and put a zip tie around these, all these bundles together so it keeps the tape from unraveling. All right, the secondary relay is for my run circuit. So we're gonna move the radio circuit out of the way for now. And we're going to connect up the yellow wire on the run circuit to two separate circuits. One being blue wire right here, which powers the ignition coil, the computer, and things like that, so that when the run switch is on, this is on. Next, we need our five pin relay and it's gonna get its power onto the 30. We're gonna cut off some of this wire, connect it to the blue and yellow as well. Twist, loop them back on themselves, twist again, 
and a little bit of tape. So now this relay is being powered by the other relay and the blue wire is also being powered by the first relay. So now we have our radio relay, our run relay, and our switched starter relay. Now here's where it gets tricky. So when the run relay powers up with the run switch, this yellow line becomes hot, powering the blue line and the secondary single pole double throw relay. So it's gonna come in on the 30. Now when the switch is just powered, this middle line, the 87A line in the center of the relay becomes hot. So that means we're going to run that one to the black and red, meaning your lights, your heater, things like that. So we're gonna cut the wire and we're gonna connect it to the black and red. Twist back on itself and tape. Now this relay is going to be hot at all times when the run switch is on powering the black and red. But what we want is when this relay gets activated by the start switch, it's going to power the 87 line, the black and blue. So we're gonna cut this wire and we're gonna connect it to the black and blue. Now we need to run our switches off of these wires because these blacks and orange are all gonna go to ground. We can bind them together and ground them on one of the bolts on the bottom of the steering column. And then each of our switch wires can go out to the appropriate switch. Now the other white wire is going to power our switches. So I'm gonna get a ring terminal and connect these guys to the ground. All right, so I got a ring terminal here. I'm going to drop it over these wires, give it a nice solid crimp. Now I have my two switches that are gonna go here. I'm gonna need to drill. Of course, there's metal behind it, which sucks. But either way, we've gotta drill some holes for these guys. We're also gonna need push on terminals to connect these. So I'm gonna grab some push terminals for these guys. We're gonna get these wires all spliced up and connected, and then we can start drilling holes. All right, so I got some female push on connectors for my switches. Now I can connect these to the white wires. We're gonna have a wire coming off for each of the switches. Here's our other white wire. We're gonna run three wires off of this, going to each of the switches. Here's our next one. I'll alternate the colors so it'll be easy to track which wire is doing what in case of a problem. As long as you double check all your connections, you make sure your crimps are good, your twists are good, your tape stays, you shouldn't really have any issues. All right, those are good. So these are gonna go from the white wire to our two switches, our run and our accessory. And then the output on these switches are gonna go to our run relay and our radio relay. Remember this single pole double throw relay is powered by the run relay and then is switched by our start switch, which we have here. So first we need to connect our switch wires. We're also gonna need a wire to run to the start switch to give it power. Now our output from the switch is gonna go to this green wire. All right, for the start button, you're gonna want to wire it up after you put it into your cigarette lighter because the nut needs to go on over the wires and screw on. You may wanna put some terminal connectors on here in case you need to disconnect it ever, but this nut on the back, there's also a little O-ring maybe to keep it from vibrating. Go ahead and pull this off and then we're gonna set it up into the cigar lighter hole. For the run and radio switch, we're gonna go ahead and twist the wires to the white wire and then wait to tape it because we still need to get the start switch through the dash to connect it. We need to get a couple of ring terminals on the outputs to the relays that are going to go up to the main switch and the accessory switch. So now as we can see, these go to our switches, these come from our switches, these go to the ground, and this is gonna go up to our start button. So now, let's see if I can get a good shot of the cigarette lighter. You just kinda wiggle it push it and it'll pop right out. Once you get it out a little bit, it may help to grab it with some pliers. And just pull, there we go. We're gonna disconnect it and then push this wire back through so we don't need it. This should snap right back down. And then you have just a hole. And we may need to remove this, not real sure yet, but we're gonna test fit it right now with the switch and see what happens. All right, we have the start button, feed it through kind of see how well it fits. It's a little loose in there and the threads aren't gonna be able to grab with this piece still in. So I'm gonna try and pry that back out. So what I'm gonna have to do now is get a couple of washers. They're as big as this outside hole, but are small enough on the inside hole to allow this start button to be gripped. So I'm gonna try that now. Okay, sorry about the wind noise. It's just, it's getting too cold out here and uh, 
my hands are starting to hurt. So I turned on the furnace. Now what I've found with these switches is they're a little bit smaller than the holes. So what you need is a washer way bigger than the button. And then you can either find them with a hole big enough already or like me, just reuse what you have. So I'm gonna drill out this center hole so that it fits over the threaded part. It'll catch the button in the cigarette lighter. With the S2000 button, you don't need to do this, but you will need to scrape the whole edges in the car so that the S2000 button will fit. Same principle, nothing's really different. You're gonna need two washers, one for the front, one for the back. That way you can kind of pinch it into the cigarette lighter. So I'm gonna make this thing fit. All right, so as you can see, that fits now. I'm gonna do it to another washer. Make me one more washer like that, and then I can paint that black and be done with it. And there we go. Two washers fit over the threads. Now I can sandwich them into the dash. Should fit perfect. Next, so that the start button light will only come on when the e-brake is up. Luckily, I already have the cover off of my e-brake. I'm gonna disconnect this wire and untuck it a little bit and run another wire up for my ground for the start button. This is just a single wire detects ground when the e-brake is pulled up. So we're just gonna splice into this wire and run another wire up the side and into the dash. Now with the console removed, you can see the wire running over to the e-brake. We're just gonna tap into it and run it right up into the dash. I also have a new switch I'm gonna put in right here to get rid of this old plastic crappy one. It's starting to fail. You saw my other video on my iPad install update down powers a fan behind the iPad for hot days and up powers the charger on the iPad so that you can turn the power on and off again for hot days so that it's not constantly charging the iPad up. So I'm going to replace this switch. I've got a nice little metal switch. We'll throw that in while I'm here. Okay, so the little crappy switch I got from Radio Shack literally broke apart in my hand. So I'll finish that switch later. While I'm in here, I still want to do the silicone around the shift boot. So I'm going to do that. That way it'll have some time to set up. So I've traced the red wire from the e-brake up into the harness here. So i got another piece of wire to run around to the start switch. There's my fan and iPad charger wires that will go to the switch I just broke. Splice off of this wire. I do that just by stripping into it or cutting it completely in half. Great. I'm going to go ahead and tape this area off with some metalized tape and then fill it with silicone so that it does not leak exhaust gas anymore. All right, so I used some aluminumized tape just to make a cradle and I kind of looped it across so that it has some actual flex to it. And that was literally just to keep the silicone from dripping through onto the tranny. And then I used 100% silicone caulk and I filled this gap and smoothed it from one edge not touching the shifter ball over to this rubber edge so that the tranny can still move and flex the silicone without actually breaking it. And this will prevent exhaust gases from getting into the cabin when you have your windows down. So I'm gonna let that cure before I put the heat wrap and everything back together. I need to get a new switch for my fan and iPad charger. I'm gonna leave all this disassembled for now. I'll put it back together once I have the new switch later today. Now back to the start switch. All right, so I painted the front washer. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed the wires through that and then it should sit nice and flush. So there's our start button. Had to change batteries. You know a video is going long when you go through a whole battery. Now I can feed it through, move the wires from the old cigar lighter out of the way and snug it right on up in there. Looks perfect. Now I have another washer and a nut that goes on the back to snug it down. So, Get this washer around these wires, as well as the lock nut, and then feed the lock nut onto the back of the button. So there she is all flushed in. Now we need to connect all the wires and give it a test. After connecting the battery, of course, we should have a gray wire coming from over here for the ground. So we're gonna strip some of this wire off and connect it to this ground here and splice it to the black wire coming off the switch. At this point, all the wires are connected except to my ground and my run accessory switches. I still need to drill some holes right here. And start with a couple of pilot holes and then move up to a larger drill bit.
All right, before I button everything up, I'm gonna give it a test fire. We got power going to the relays, power coming to the switches. So then we have a radio relay and a run relay. We need to connect the ground up to the dash. It's like that's a 12 millimeter. While I'm in here, I'd also wanna go ahead and drop the steering wheel. That way I can go ahead and remove this lock cylinder. Make sure to support the steering wheel with something like your face. Otherwise, it will come crashing down into your face. And there we go. Once the two 12 millimeter bolts are removed, you can kind of see this plate right here that goes across. There aren't any nuts holding it on. It literally has to just be ground off. So what I'm going to do is get these wires out of the way and use the grinding wheel to lop that section right there off. And then I should just be able to pry it right around. What I did was cut straight down through this pin and that's allowing me to lift this plate off. And once I pry it all the way over the top, the entire lock cylinder assembly will fall straight down. So I'm gonna keep prying at that. Steering wheel just unlocked. So clearly I got it loose enough to break free. Unfortunately, it looks like everything attaches to that, which is kind of a bummer. All right, so I'm gonna have to re-engineer that. So don't do that at home, kids. Just do, like I said before, jam a screwdriver in this and break the locking mechanism because this holds everything to the steering wheel. So I'm sure I can figure out how to make this work. Let's get the screws out of this assembly. There we go. That's disconnected completely. And it does keep everything sandwiched together. You can see the lock inside there. That's what actually locks it to the steering wheel. So it looks like you know, I need this mechanism, but not locked to stay together. Looks like those were screws, but they ground off the heads. So you could probably just punch a hole down in it and unscrew it. I'm thinking I can cut this piece off, grind all this loose, and then just ratchet strap it or uh you know what i mean yeah it looks like i need to cut this whole assembly out of here so it doesn't lock anymore and then use this to mount this to keep it from turning shouldn't be too hard all right so like i was saying before your best option is going to be to bust this with a flathead screwdriver into the keyhole and twist it with vice grips until you feel it break and your wheel turns freely, then you know you've got it um, set free. However, what I did was cut off everything I didn't need, made myself a bracket basically that will hold these, and then I'm going to attach it like so. There we go. And then fasten it with this band clamp. And it seems like, yeah, it doesn't want to let it turn at all, so you don't gotta worry about it turning later. As long as you get this band clamp nice and tight, don't use a cheap one from Harbor Freight, obviously. Get you something from Walmart or AutoZone. I mean, there's not really a lot of options anymore for good band clamps. I've seen them online and they're really expensive, but I'm sure they work just fabulously. So what you wanna do, let's get this guy nice and centered. You'll feel it kind of click into its old home and it locks into the steering shaft and then just tighten the band clamp all the way down try not to break it also if you're going to do it this way when you're cutting this bracket it is made of aluminum and obviously cutting anything with a circular saw or a angle grinder is dangerous in itself but it's a little more dangerous with aluminum because aluminum has a tendency to heat up and clog the grinding blades. And if it gets too hot and too clogged, basically if, if you're pushing really hard against the cutting wheel, you can actually bind the cutting wheel into the aluminum and it will disintegrate the cutting wheel sending particles and jagged pieces of metal flying back at your face. Google angle grinder accident images if you don't believe me. All right, that's nice and tight. I'm going to put the screws back in through the front to hold all this in place. So your blinkers and your washer stalks will stay put. They would not if you would have just removed this. We basically just converted the 
lock cylinder into a bracket for the blinker and washer module. So now I'm gonna zip tie these wires up, put the steering wheel back up where it belongs with our ground wire connected to it. I'm gonna put our beauty cover back on. Now for the steering wheel surround, I'm gonna tape this hole off. There, put a little aluminumized tape over the hole on the back and the front and then painted it. So now you wouldn't even know there was used to be a keyhole there unless you know Miatas. All right, perfect example of why you wanna test everything before you button it all together. Quick change from the wiring diagram. I had the start button being powered off of the constant white and that does not need to be that way. The wire coming off of the run switch needs to power the start switch. Otherwise, the light on the start button is lit all the time and that will kill your battery. This way, the start button only becomes activated if the proper run switch is activated. So this line going to the 85 on the relay can get split and go to the start button and then everything else is exactly the same. So if you have any questions about this, please comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. It can get Get kind of confusing if you've never been trained in wiring diagrams or schematics but i assure you it's just as simple as it looks here it's just as simple as it looks there i'll go over it one more time for you what we have is the white wire is powering my two switches the other white wire is powering the 30 prong on the two main relays and then the accessory relay is just switched across this switch here so you have a 30 connected to the white wire you have the 87 connected to the black wire with the white trim which is the accessory switch so basically what you have is on a relay you have a switch running through the middle and a switch running across this switch activates this switch I hope that explains it. The blue wire is connected to my white constant power. The yellow wire is connected to the black and white. And then my black is ground and my white is my switch. The switch is getting power from the other white wire. Same thing with the run relay. The relay white is powering the 30. The yellow is going to the blue wire, which is the computer and the ignition coil. The white wire is going to my run switch and the black is going to ground. Then off of that, I have the 30 prong of the single pole double throw relay is connected to the blue and yellow from the other relay. And then the middle goes to the black and red for all my power options like heat and lights and stuff like that. And then the red 87 coming out goes to the black with blue, which is my start wire. So when the push start button is activated, the start wire is hot because of this switch. And then when you let off of the start wire, it goes goes back to just powering the black with red. So it momentarily turns off your black with red wire, your heat, your lights, everything like that while starting. So you have all your juice going to the starter. And then the second you let off the start button, it goes back to powering all the power options. You'll notice that on the key switch anyway. Orange is going to my ground up to the steering column. Don't forget to disconnect your lock for your steering. Oh, I already found a dollar under my seat making money. So now that I have everything connected properly, I should be able to just turn this power switch on. You don't even need to turn the radio switch on. You'll see the engine start light is on because my e-brake is up. And now that the power to the run switch is connected, I can mash in the clutch. See that in here. Once I let off of the e-brake, the engine start light goes away. Kill the run switch to shut it off everything. No key anymore. Pretty simple. Now what you end up with is a fairly stock looking setup. Also plan on taking the plug that used to fit into the lighter and cutting it off flush and adding a tiny bit of magnet around the edge and then it should just snap right over the start button and you would never know that the start button was there. So again, if you guys have any questions and you wanna do this to your car, be sure to comment below. Constructive criticism is always welcome. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If you liked the video, please click the like button, it helps. And if you wanna subscribe so that you're notified instantly as soon as I upload a new video, click that subscribe button and then click the little bell next to it, letting YouTube know that you actually want to be notified when I upload a new video. And as always guys, keep on modding.